Hey, welcome everybody. So I'm going to talk a little bit about IWD for the next 20 minutes. Um, and I've been doing this a while now, so you've been spent on redoing Wi-Fi for a little bit. Um, the problem is Wi-Fi on Linux still sucks. It's still not really where we want it to be. We have, if you're still running WP Supplicant, I feel sorry for you, but even with IWD, we have not really fully achieved where we wanted to set out. So, around five years ago, um, we set out to just redo it. Um, and same as Guybrush back in the days then asked what he has to do, uh, the answer was you have to do X, Y, Z, and X, not what. You keep running around and trying to fiddle with things. Um, everybody else who actually worked on Wi-Fi with the Linux system had to do the same thing. Um, this is from about a year ago. It's still better than it was around five or ten years ago. It was even worse. But you still had the thing where um, if you're in the shoes of network manager or conman back in the day, so any kind of system that actually needs to manage the Wi-Fi, you're running around and picking up bits and pieces. So it has to talk to W Supplicant, it has to talk to the Netlink interface directly because W Supplicant doesn't give you all information. Uh, why? Nobody really knows. It chooses not to. Um, then you have to store your known network somewhere, then you have to figure them out what they were, then you have to pick them back together. Um, then you have to talk to RTNL to do the configuration. Um, interesting enough, uh, around two or three years ago it was still simpler because you basically only fill it with W Supplicant and uh, the Netlink interface. Um, but then people wanted more stuff. They wanted roaming, they wanted the hotspot setups, they wanted something else. So the UI got involved and actually tried to even circumvent a network manager. I think the state right now is that a lot of things in the UI, especially GNOME UI, has been gone a lot better. So they've removed some of these hacks, but if you look at a Chrome OS uh, system, um, the UI, uh, pretty much uh, the Chrome browser, still fiddles around your back and does certain things, um, which is bad. Um, Interesting enough, what we found about uh, a month ago is that DHCP CD, which network managers still used, I hope they're going to drop this now, at least I saw an announcement they're going to drop this and use the DHCP library properly, it still at some point decides to dump your Wi-Fi interfaces. I mean, what's going to do with it? Nobody knows. Um, we have a tool, IWMON, that actually monitors everybody who's doing something, so you see that a certain requests come in. So if every process in your system at some point starts to dump certain informations of your Wi-Fi networks, you really never get anywhere. Even mind that actually might actually fiddle behind your back behind it and start to scan, for example. You're trying to be optimized and do something, but then, oh, I want to scan now on all channels, and you waste like two seconds finishing a five gigahertz scan while you start to roam. Uh, bad things happen if you mess these things up and don't have the self-contained. So, you feel like uh, talking to Stan, and he tries to sell you everything and God knows what. It's all the great things you're going to have, um, which is great, um, unless you end up with a boat and nobody's doing anything. Um, and that's where we were stuck around five years ago. Um, we have made a lot of progress, and right now the system actually looks like this. Um, you can run IWD. Our network manager has an IWD backend. You can just switch it on with a configuration file. I think it even lands in most distros. Um, and then IW takes care of your Wi-Fi. So network manager, all the support in network manager for Wi-Fi stays pretty much dormant. It doesn't do anything because we do everything for you. We remember the networks. We automatically roam for you. We know when to roam. We know when to scan. We know actually how to talk to the access point when your signal goes weak and say, look, uh, don't you have a better access point in your vicinity that we can use? Um, even if the access point would ask us to do something for it, like scan on, on his behalf, we could do this as well. So a lot of things have gotten a lot easier and a lot simpler. So at the end of the day, you can trust IW to do everything. It's pretty much, I give you the passphrase, you remember it, and you reconnect. So pretty much up and running. Um, and then we hand the informations back up. So network runner becomes really just a shim with everything else. Um, oopsie, this is kind of nice. So what do we get? We have a really centralized database. So IWD knows about every network you're connected to. It knows what frequency you're connected to. It knows what passphrase is used. It knows what uh, security credentials is used. It knows really everything. We store this and we can reuse next time. Um, that means if you actually want to reconnect the network, you've been before, you know you've last time you saw it on channel uh, 9 and 2.4 gigahertz, it takes you roughly around uh, 100 milliseconds to actually find it again not like three or four seconds. So you can't open that uh, laptop your fast and it will be back on the network. Um, it supports uh, WPA uh, personal and enterprise, so all the uh, known enterprise provisioning uh, networks are supported. Some Edu rooms configurations are still kind of weird. People sending us requests where we can't make this with our uh, university network work. We're trying to fix them. I think 
we pretty much down to a few of them where it didn't work. I heard some rumors that Irun wants to actually use a more uh, streamlined approach to this one. Hopefully they get to this one and then this becomes all a, a problem of the past. Since IWD is the only entity that actually scans, all our scans are completely optimized and when possible uh, anonymous. That means we don't leak your uh, MAC address when we don't need to. So they're all passive scannings if we can. By the way, hidden networks is the problem where you can't do passive scanning, so don't use hidden networks. Um, and uh, we only scan what we really have to. So unless you actually have a UI that tells you I need the full spectrum because you have to find a new access point, you will never see it trying to scan the full spectrum unless you uh, close your laptop, go to another country, open it up there and actually don't know, it finds everything and doesn't find anything it used to have before. Otherwise, it's really optimized. If you roam or if you do any operation where you have to scan, it really only scans that particular channel um, that you ask for. So we do roaming. We do roaming internally, so you don't have to, uh, from the UI or network, tell it to roam. If the signal goes down, we ask the access point, where is your next access point? If you, know, if you have a mesh, nexus, uh, mesh uh, access set of access points that are meshed, or you have multiple access points together, or corporate network, they mostly will tell you where the next access point is. And we know this then, and we can scan for this one. So our transitions, you can pre-authenticate them, so meaning all the transitions go really, really fast. So you don't really have to waste time. Uh, we do the resource management as well, so we even could scan on the behalf of the access point if they need to find, okay, is the access point closer than the other one, et cetera, and so forth. Um, WPA3 um, is on by default. You don't have to do anything. If your access point supports WP3, you will get authenticated with a WP3 with your existing credentials if you have them. If you have to update your credentials because you only stored the, uh, uh, the passphrases, uh, you didn't store the passphrases, we will ask you again to provide the passphrase, but otherwise it's completely automatic. Um, which is kind of nice, and it doesn't have the fact that you oh, you don't understand WP3, and now all of a sudden your network is considered open or some weird situations. Um, you don't have to update the UI code or anything else. It's all the same operations. Um, OWE, uh, Openistic Wireless Encryption, means you would can get encrypt, uh, you can get an open network, but you get it encrypted. Um, you don't have any man in the middle protection if you connect to a, like a coffee shop hotspot, but if a coffee, coffee shop uh, hotspot will support encryption, you, at least your link will be encrypted. You can be still be spoofed, but at least nobody can actually just uh, uh, passively sniff your traffic there. Um, the app engine is integrated into IWD, so we ship our own eApp engine uh, with most support for everything. Um, recently, we added Hotspot 2.0 support, so if you have any kind of Hotspot networks uh, where you can use your SIM card or any other credential to authenticate, uh, they will work as well with all the things that comes with it. I don't think anybody has managed to set this up with W Supplicant. It's all manual handling and manual testing. This is the first time I think it's a fully integrated system where this uh, just works on a Linux site. Um, and we do heavily address randomization for privacy reasons. I already mentioned that we don't, uh, we always scan passively, we don't scan actively if we don't have to, except hidden networks. But we also can, can do address randomization on a per uh, access point basis. So if you connect to the next access point, we're going to make up a new address uh, and use that one. And we store the used address as soon as well. So next time you connect to the next point, you will be uh, uh, use the same identity. So you can reuse your DHCP information and don't get a randomly new one. Um, that's all handled internally. So network manager, when it uses IW, doesn't have to do anything of this for you. It will just be done. And it can be on by default. Um, so this is all there as of today. It works really well. And you can just use it. Um, we didn't really quite stop there because we needed to go a little bit further. And a little bit further is uh, where people might gonna scratch their heads now. So IWD contains network configuration setup. So you can run IWD and bring it all to have your route set up and uh, tell systemd resolve D what the DNS servers are. Um, this needs to be done for really embedded systems where you don't actually have the luxury of running a network manager or anything else, and where you really only have Wi-Fi. So why bring another three or four systems that are trying to manage this one? So it can do this everything internally and actually set up all your, uh, all your network configuration as well. So it moves the code and down. Right now, it's a configuration option. You choose one side or the other. It does automatic configuration and hands everything off, or it doesn't. Uh, it's off by default. That's what's used uh, inside when you run this on a Fedora with a network manager. Um, it's currently still limited. Uh, we only have DHCP v4 support. The v6 support is coming in. Uh, the network configuration is rather limited. Uh, and we only support system resolve D and resolve conf callouts uh, for the Debian users that actually don't have resolve D running. Um, we don't want to mess around with etc resolve conf uh, writing directly or anything else. Then, I mean, at that point, it's like, whatever, hack this together by yourself because you're running on a really dedicated system anyway. 
Um, this is experimental. Uh, it actually works really well, but use with caution because you might actually screw things up if you have something else running on your system. Um, I pretty much see everybody screaming right now um, because we actually took things away from everybody else. Um, we had to do this for the simple reason because the goal is really we want to connect in 100 milliseconds or less. And if you want to get to the internet connection fully completed in 100 milliseconds or less, you have to do things differently. You just can't go and, oh, I spent another second here, I spent another second there. So right now, uh, we have a tool, um, IW Lock, which isn't public yet, but will be in a couple of weeks, that actually you can even use with W Supplicant or System e Network D or Network Man or anybody else uh, to actually check what time is spent at what step of the configuration process, and it tells you, okay, this took like uh, X amount of milliseconds and so on and so forth. So in a, in a good setup at home, you have around 100 milliseconds that you just need for scanning. And it's not really an optimized piece of hardware. If you might need to use a newer one uh, where you actually uh, have a better transceiver and where you might get a little bit faster, but the scanning is really when you know you can only scan one channel on 2.4 gigahertz to see if the access point is there and get the uh, information element back from it. That's what you need right now. The only way to make that faster is by have a better firmware or have a better transceiver in your hardware. There's nothing IWD can do about it. Um, the connection time uh, by doing the uh, association and the authentication with a four-way handshake is another around 100 milliseconds. That's just what it takes. You have to get the data over the air, you have collisions over the air, and that's around 100 milliseconds you need as well. DHCP has been really fast uh, since the early days of Conman with System D Network D having this also. So there was really no surprise that we got this down to 50, uh, between 50 and 100 milliseconds. You still have a 300 millisecond that you need to actually get from uh, I have the card up and running and actually connect to the network. We are not there at the 100 millisecond time. Um, Interesting enough, uh, IWD runs PAE over Netlink A2211. I don't know if anybody knows the difference, but normally W Supplicant opens the AF packet socket to run the PAE packets for the four-way handshake. Uh, we put a patch into the kernel that you can run these uh, as part of the Netlink protocol, so it gets, you get a frame in the Netlink protocol. We did this mainly so they get come in order with the Netlink messages, uh, because the kernel schedules the AF packet uh, queue differently than the Netlink queue, which means you could might get your connect association uh, response uh, earlier or later than the actual PAE packets, and then you have this out-of-order problem that you have to resort them back together, and you really don't know what it's doing. So this one actually makes sure that it comes in order, because over the air it's in order as well. Um, the interesting artifact of this one is it's four times faster than doing this on AF packet socket. So if you want to do this setup on an AF packet socket, you end up, instead of 300 milliseconds, you end up with 1.2 seconds. That's a massive difference by just how AF packet works and how much overhead it actually consumes by installing the BPF filter and so on and so forth. Um, so there's a big uh, speed up already there. Um, the problem is on these 300 milliseconds, if you want to do address randomization, you have to add another 300 milliseconds as well because the only way to do address randomization is you power down the interface um, and you power it back up with a new address. It's the only way to do this right now. Um, the problem is most hardware unloads the firmware and have to reload the firmware, so wasting a lot of time to just get you back up. So if you have 1.2 seconds by doing W supplicant with the PAE over an IF packet socket, you're doing address randomization by power down over RTNL at another 3 milliseconds, you get 1.5 seconds. 1.5 seconds is really far away uh, on the 100 millisecond goal. Um, the Android people uh, on chats and uh, bug reports reported that the address randomization can add a penalty of 3 seconds. Um, if you don't want it, that's fine. I've seen comments on the mailing list as well that like, why are you going to do this? But for privacy reasons, you really want to do address randomization for every access point you're going to have these days. So we have achieved a lot, but we are still drowning with the lots, last bits and pieces to get them right, to make this really constantly have privacy enabled, have the full security working, and have this really, really fast. <laughs> We're at the level where we can't work any more magic. IWD has really worked all its magic it can do by having using the existing interfaces with the existing kernel patches that we put in there, with the existing things we actually took out and put somewhere else. That's pretty much as fast as we can go right now. So we need Netlink AD2 optimizations. We need to change the kernel APAs in a massive way where we say, look, every millisecond counts. I mean, if you send me a a full Wi-Fi dump of the network, uh, and then I have to dump it again because you're missing out some, information, some important information uh, because I need that flag to decide how I'm going to operate. Something is wrong. And that's how it works sometimes because of some legacy reasons and some bug fixes uh, that are problems, uh, but they're not really problems because all user space has moved on. And we have to do a lot of round trips to the kernel. 
people think that the round trips through kernel don't matter because system calls are really cheap. But if you have a tight goal of 100 milliseconds, these round trips matter. So, bunch of patches on the mailing list to actually uh, change things. Bunch of patches to actually do uh, address randomization based on the connect, so we can give you the address on the connect to use. Um, and some cards do live address changes, they support this actually. Um, we end the situations. We're trying to give them something, uh, and uh, so far we have not got taken them. It's, I have currently no idea how we're going to reach the 100 millisecond goal, um, but we need to go there at some point, um, so we have to see how this goes. Um, we try to make this better, um, but currently it's a fight to get the things into the kernel that we actually can make things differently. W supplicant is going to continue as it is. Um, IWD will, is currently better and faster, but um, what are you going to do about this? So, um, IWD 21, uh, 021 is the latest. Uh, we haven't got to 1.0 release. I think I promised this for uh, Christmas last year. Uh, I ended up doing, <laughs> it's, it's just a number at the end of the day. Um, but we haven't sat down to actually say, look, this API is totally fine. Um, now, uh, someone is working on P2P support, so they're putting P2P support in there, so we get this as well, someone can toy with this one. The API looks really easy and simple, so uh, if anybody wants to go back and working on wireless display, they can. Um, yesterday I talked to Leonard, and he said his measuring point for how big system D is, is still W supplicate. And I was a little bit confused by that statement. It's like, okay, uh, I was pretty certain that system D is actually larger in source code lines uh, than W supplicate. So today I did a count. So W supplicant with everything in it counts around 400,000 lines of code. I was like, okay, what? Okay, they have a lot of stuff in there and a lot of things that duplicates and they're on every OS on the planet and so on and so forth. Um, but even if you just look at the supplicant pieces, they end up still with a plus 300,000 lines of code. I mean, then I said, okay, let's take IWD. I mean, the pure daemon is around 40,000 lines of code. With tools and unit tests and everything around, we had 70,000 lines of code. That's still portion of what W Supercon actually provides. So I thought, okay, that's not too bad. So we did 2,500 commits roughly in the last five years, and we ended up with 27 contributors. So I feel pretty happy that, at least from a maintainability and code review point of view, I think we have done the right thing there. Um, so anybody wants to actually go out and test this, um, there's an easy switch in Fedora and probably most other distros uh, where you can just install it, test it, and please tell us what isn't working. I mean, we have covered most cases, we have covered most, we have auto test and unit test for uh, all the heavy things, but there's slight and slight variations, especially Edoroam networks, etc., where things actually don't work. Enterprise network setups, if you use them, please tell us if they don't work, because we're really trying to make this rock solid and uh, workable. Um, and with that one, I'm even this time under my 20 minutes. Thank you so much. Questions? I think you were first. Um, you say that uh, it's uh, so much more um, wonderful than WPA supplicant. Uh, what are the cur current regressions uh, comp for a normal laptop use case? Uh, I'm uh, uh, since it's so, so much good. I wonder why everybody is not using it yet. Um. So I think why, we, why it isn't actually on every distro by default is right, we haven't pushed for it. So I think every distro packages it now. Um, them making the switch takes a while. Nobody thinks, oh, we're going to ship something different by default, then we have to do with these kind of bugs again if we have some. Um, we have to start pushing for it that one actually gets changed as default in the major distros. But I think everybody has uh, packaged it right now, so you can pretty much do an upget install, yum install, or DNF install, and then switch the one line in network manager to make it use. But there will be other bugs coming. We try. That's the next step. Or was there something more to your question? Uh, did I got the gist right? Thank you. I think there was another one over there. Hey, uh, hi. Um, yeah, th thanks for the great software. I've been using it for uh, like a couple of months now, and awesome. it actually uh, works very well. Uh, for my use cases, at least, um, I just have like a slight regression or bug or problem in like a systemd networkd context, basically, where there's this race condition about naming of uh, of uh, yeah you, you okay. know it already. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's, it's a bit annoying. <laughs> and uh, do you have any idea how to fix that, or if that's so possible, actually? Uh, the stuff he's talking about is that IWD is too fast. So normally you have systemd and system networkd introduce the uh, concept of persistent naming. Um, so the, uh, the interface names are named 
add a different pattern or something. Um, actually, UDEF is too slow. We are faster in bringing this up. So once uh, we already started up and running, we will have that interface. It's active, and we own it. IWD on some cards actually go one, gets one step further. We actually take all the interfaces away and regenerate, recreate them. So the, the existence of a network interface with Wi-Fi is a legacy artifact from back in the days that doesn't need to be there. You can do all the uh, Wi-Fi operations for the control path without having the network interface present. The network interface is just the data path. Um, and in some situations, we actually just remove them all and then put them back together. So any kind of naming that you set up or the distro set up is pointless anyway because we keep redoing it. So um, for people that want to have that proper naming, for us, the only way is to wait until UDEF actually finished. Um, it's time wasted. I don't have a good answer for this one. Uh, I think I looked at actually, uh, because System e Network D can do it because it waits for UDEF to finish, uh, we actually don't look at UDEF at all because we don't care, because we already have told that the interface is there um, uh, or from the Wi-Fi side. Uh, I don't have a good answer for this one. Is it that right. important? Uh, I was just like a kind of, kind of a weird annoyance uh, by, by first using it, uh, all of a sudden your, your network naming is different again yeah. and then a lot of configuration breaks. And, uh, the main issue. So my, my personal viewpoint on this one, in, a, in two or three years, we will have actually IWD do all the network configuration and network D and uh, system network D and network manager will just follow it. And then it, these systems, the connection managers become only responsible for setting the right route and the route metrics, while the IP configuration of the interface itself, it's something that's so fundamentally Wi-Fi specific, especially with the new specifications that are coming in, where you actually get your IP address already based on your association. So we don't actually need to run DHCP to actually set the interface information. So what we would have, would have to do, we have to pass that back up to the stack, so the stack gets them to get it passed back down. It's like, why? We already knew what it's supposed to be. Because the access points give you the IP address within the information elements or some of the action frames. Um, I think that's going to change really Thanks. quickly. Uh, uh, just a closing question, sure. uh, because you, you didn't really cover this in, in your talk, but uh, do you have any... Sorry. Uh, sorry if I hawk the no. mic, uh, but it's, uh, uh, can you tell something about the access point? Uh, about like w um, okay. access point usage with IWD because that you didn't really cover and how that's compared to host APD, for instance. So we have the basic uh, access point support. So you can switch IWD in a way that it becomes an access point. It's a really <laughs> rudimentary setup, same as network manager uses, same as everybody else uses. Um, the work on actually having a host APD replacement is ongoing. But there's nothing substantial there. That's actually another completely different branch, different ball game somewhere. Uh, we are working on that one as well. So right now you can just set up an access point and then you have to attach it to a bridge and then run your usual, usual stuff. So that works, same as with network manager expect. I think it's even integrated network manager. So if you click on the UI there, say create access point, it actually does work as well. Um, maybe a naive question, but why does MAC address randomization causes so much penalty? Can't you just like regenerate them and use one out of the pocket and it should be the same as the right. native one? So the way you currently have to do it, you have to if down the interface. You have to power down the file. Uh, this unloads the firmware. Then you have to reload the firmware and boot up all your transceivers, etc. That's where the big penalty is coming from. With, <laughs> we have patches where you can do live address changes. There, we have a huge discussion. They're not getting accepted. And they say, oh, just put down the firmware. So whatever, who cares? <laughs> yes, please. OK, so apart from um, that bit, my question is a bit of a follow-up on that. You said some cards can do it, as, as in the card and the firmware can do uh, live address uh, changes. Can Intel cards do that? Yes, they can. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty much everything that's run on uh, yeah, a lot of things that run on uh, that are Mac A211 based, so the soft Mac cards can do it. There might be some slight variations, some of them can't. Uh, the full Mac card is always the thing, is like, uh, do they do it or don't they do it? You can always have a new firmware that can do it. It's really no problem. Um. On your website, is there a site where all your kernel patches and so on is um, linked, or how nope. can one find them? No. Um, um, do you have it's, a suggestion? On, it's on Linux wireless uh, mailing list. Um, our goal is to get the patches actually into the kernel. 
Yep. Um, but is there like a tag in the patch line or so one can look for? Because I guess Linux wireless list is quite um, a, a mm, high traffic, yeah. so it's hard to find those. It's not high traffic, but it is traffic. Um, <laughs> okay, my definition of high traffic is kernel mailing list. Uh, never mind. Um, no, I don't think so. We can make this happen. If someone wants to toy with this one, we can uh, see if we get uh, this on the uh, wiki of the IW wiki and say, look, these oh, are the patches branch, we can test out. Yeah. Um, and the second thing, I want to note that from the core boot perspective, or uh, booting Linux um, fast, um, I think there's the same problem, um, that there's a lot of um, parts in the Linux kernel where there's a lot of sleeps and so on, which are uh, much too long, especially in graphics cards, which really hurt performance. So if you have an idea how to force or uh, persuade developers to uh, to not do this, like in review that they have, for example, to, to justify everything is, which takes longer than 10 milliseconds or so, um, I'm open to suggestions. But um, <coughs> I hit these problems a lot in storage yeah. and in, uh, in, in graphics especially. So... <laughs> The way with any connectivity technology is that if you don't program it asynchronously, you're going to get screwed anyway. Uh, IWD is fully asynchronous compared to W supplicant, which is a lot of uh, synchronous operation, and that gets to bite you. That's why we sometimes get the speed. That's why we faster than UDEF actually to grab the interface and just own it. Um, so the most you can make asynchronous, the better you can make any decisions and uh, get this going. So that's my only recommendation. It doesn't work always. With file systems and storage, you have blocking operations that need to be blocking because they need to be synchronous. With wireless technologies, it's a little bit differently because they are, by its nature, asynchronous. I think I'm, my time is up now if I've got this right. So thanks, everybody. Have a good day.